Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, I've been blown away by the response to my Wickoff distribution video. I posted that in April, and at the time I posted it, I tried to share it with all of my favorite YouTube um, Bitcoiners and uh, crypto uh, daily TA peeps, and just got pretty much rejected <laughs> from everyone that I tried to share this information with. So it's uh, somewhat validating that uh, all of a sudden with this recent drop, people are looking for answers. And even though the answers were there the whole time, um, the eye sees what the mind is prepared to find. And I myself also got in the space of um, sweeping this under the rug, getting back into bull mode, watching all my altcoins uh, explode and being really excited, willing to forgive and forget um, and then again, we had another uh, big drop and everyone is is digging. So all of a sudden I had uh, 84,000 views on a video that I posted a month ago and I am compelled to share with you my most recent findings and I hope that uh, this helps you uh, plan and get in step with the market makers movements. Um, I've been following a number of channels uh, and a few that I would love to recommend. One is Traders Reality. It's a great YouTube channel. He's uh, one of the individuals that really gave me a, a new approach to thinking about the market and really understanding that this is not something that just moves, it's something that's moved. And while that is sort of like the rose-colored lenses falling out of the glasses, you know, we all want to believe that this is decentralized and it's the people's um, currency and this is not just uh, susceptible to the same corruption and manipulation as everything else. Um, unfortunately it is, but uh, if we understand that and move with it, we can at least be successful in our swimming with the river instead of against it. So I have an image up here. I'm a huge Pearl Jam fan. Um, this is binaural and these are binaural galaxies um, or a binaural nebula. We have two different uh, systems sort of interacting around this central point. And keep this image in mind because what I'm going to show you uh, ties into this image. So here is the now infamous chart in question. And as you recall, uh, this is really a textbook Wyckoff distribution. If we go back over here to the Wyckoff model, let's just open this in a new tab. So we can kind of see these things side by side. You know, the video that has gotten so much attention was really the one showing these um, side by side images, uh, exemplifying how this 2020 and 2021 bull market has really been defined by a textbook characteristic uh, Wyckoff distribution in which the controllers of the supply um, execute this set of movements to fleece the public. And, and I definitely uh, encourage you to read the article that this comes from. I've posted the link in the description. It really breaks down move for move why this uh, Wyckoff distribution is so successful at taking something, marking it up, exhausting that demand, and then driving the price back down while the same interests are able to reaccumulate and resell multiple times uh, those uh, assets. But the big question, and the question that I've been grappling with is, well, why didn't it drop at the end? Why didn't it drop like a stone? And when I was recording that first video, we were right here in this first little kind of reaction after the big drop off, after the UTAD. And at that point, I actually sold out of my Bitcoin. I um, you know, I, I rearranged my whole portfolio, really getting ready for an alt season, but not putting much faith in Bitcoin, because once you've seen something like this and you understand it, you understand that the motive is to drive the price lower, to reaccumulate. And I do fundamentally believe that in order for Bitcoin to go up, um, it needs to reaccumulate. But we had something completely different than this schematic on the other side. We had this... Um, uh, kind of rally and then we bounced around and we broke back down and then we went up and we kind of formed this other pattern 
after the Wyckoff distribution. And so I've been scratching my head about this and trying to understand, well, what are their intent? Uh, what's their intention uh, behind this uh, apparent negation of the next uh, phase D and phase E of the Wyckoff distribution? And I think I might have find, uh, found an answer tonight as I was really digging in this. And if you remember my image of the binaural galaxy or nebula, uh, you have to remember that cryptocurrency isn't just one coin. It isn't just one stock. And the whole principle behind Wyckoff um, method is to understand the market as the sum total of the composite man that all of the stocks all of the motions are all moving as if they were the intent of one individual and again read that article it's very illuminating uh, to think about this because clearly it's not just one person that is you know manipulating this price but collectively the effect is as if one interest um, one set of goals is behind these movements and so, again, in the last video, I invited you to take the red pill and join me in the alternate reality. Um, I'm about to do that again with you. So let's, let's hop back over here. And uh, here's our Wyckoff distribution. Here's the predicted uh, next steps, uh, really just dropping like a stone into an accumulation, but we didn't do that. And the question is why? Well, here's my theory. I'm going to um, show you another chart and this chart is the sister goddess to Bitcoin. This is Ethereum. And so what's super interesting about this is that uh, right now, if we look at Ethereum, it is doing, and you know what, let me just for the moment get rid of this uh, overlay, but look at this move that Ethereum just did, and I want you to compare it to the beginning of the Wyckoff distribution for Bitcoin. And if you look at this, it is freaky, right? We've got this kind of um, accumulation and these are on slightly different time frames. So let me get them in uh, kind of agreement here. I guess that's right, but let's just kind of get them looking similar so that we can really see this. It looks like Bitcoin actually moved through these moves a little bit quicker. But the, the point is, is if we look at this whole first big set of moves that Bitcoin did, it is looking eerily similar to what Ethereum has now recently done. We had this um, big move up. We had this kind of sideways consolidation, uh, kind of in this little uptrend, just like we had here with Bitcoin. And then we had this little um, dip, which we see about here. And then let me zoom in a little bit more on the, the movement here of Ethereum. Uh, we have this same kind of uh, drop down, the automatic reaction, the ST, and then we just sort of broke down into this show of weakness. And if I put that, oh, it's going <laughs> to reverse me through all these steps. Let me put my overlay back on here. And keep in mind, this is my theory. It's not uh, guaranteed, but I did the same kind of overlay here, you know, kind of cutting out some of the uh, irregularities, just like I did with Bitcoin, really just going to the peaks here. We have this very textbook Wyckoff distribution setting up again, and I've kind of extrapolated it out, um, you know, just kind of drawing. I didn't do this uh, exactly to the levels that I probably should have, but I just wanted to kind of predict, okay, where might this go if we were to have another Wyckoff distribution within Ethereum? Um, but I think that we can kind of see that happening with this big surge. You know, this was really the last week in, um, or the first week of May, uh, Bitcoin, or I'm sorry, Ethereum just, you know, blasting off towards that $4,000, uh, $4,500 mark before this big correction, you know, this very may, this very well may be that uh, buying climax, setting this range now where we can move across the distribution and have a bunch of these rallies and moves and fake outs uh, with Ethereum. And so, okay, what does that have to do with Bitcoin? Well, check this out. Can you see how when I scroll through this timeline over here, how it is moving through the timeline on this side. 
So we can see right as Bitcoin was dropping right here, this was the UTAD of Bitcoin, and then it dropped off, and then we see this kind of W pattern forming within Ethereum, right as we have this little W on the Bitcoin price. Again, this blue line is the true price of Bitcoin, whereas this line is the predicted Wyckoff. Um, and so then we had this kind of dip into that W pattern for Ethereum, and then a blast off in Ethereum and a rise in the price of Bitcoin. Here's a right in, about in here, that sideways consolidation as Bitcoin is kind of doing this sideways consolidation thing here at the top. And then we have right here on Bitcoin, this is the 7th of May, this surge and rally in Bitcoin back up to 59,000 or 58, whatever that top is, is really close to 60 again, right as Ethereum is making its big move to the upside. And we kind of have this little correction in here before that last leg up for Ethereum and then a crash back down into this uh, distribution for Ethereum. But this is mirroring as if we could superimpose this, uh, you know, second biggest crypto in the space, its own Wyckoff distribution into the price of Bitcoin. And so my theory here now is that this bull market is not over. I've, I've believed that. I've felt that for a long time. Um, I think just the, the technicals behind Bitcoin are such that the, the, the story hasn't gone away. The value of the asset hasn't gone away. And even though we had this distribution, um, this market has more to do and Ethereum is up next, right? So this is just a theory, but here's where my mind is at. I think that if we are to support Maybe an abbreviated, maybe it'll take the same amount of time, but if we are to support a distribution event for Ethereum that allows for these same movements that allow um, a second fleecing of the public with all of these false breakouts and false moves, excuse me, <laughs> um, that uh, Bitcoin's price just needs to support and actually maybe even motivate some of these moves and actions. So as we get up to um, you know, the top of this second upthrust for um, Ethereum, that could be all propagated and moved by the price of Bitcoin. So um, if we were to look at what Ethereum is likely to do next, if, if this is in fact following a Wyckoff distribution, which you know these first phases sure look like it, we could uh, conversely come back over to Bitcoin, say, you know what? It's, uh, it's very interesting that when we hit this uh, show of weakness uh, in Bitcoin, it was on the 28th of February. That was a Sunday. I remember the day. <laughs> I remember watching Bitcoin fall down to $43,000 and thinking that was a hell of a buying opportunity. Um, and lo and behold, this past Sunday, we saw uh, the whole market tank. We saw... Um, Ethereum dropped to below $3,300. And the whole point of this SOW is to shake people out of the market, to, to scare people into thinking that this is breaking, that it's going lower, and that uh, shakes people out, and then it reverses direction. So um, this is just a theory. I wouldn't uh, you know, immediately trade on this. I'd wait for confirmation. But it's, it's very likely that these patterns are um, repeating. Uh, you know, Sunday, uh, February 28th, this huge crash, everyone freaking out. Uh, Sunday, the 17th of May, uh, and we have basically the same thing. Um, but in this case now, it was Ethereum's price that, um, you know, kind of got to that stage. And this could very well set these um, bounds, the automatic reaction being up here or perhaps down here, you know, this is all very subjective where we draw these lines, uh, at least at this stage. I just marked this up for this video, but um, point is um, the pattern, I think, is, is accurate. Where these moves actually come in and the timing of them is uh, still to be seen. But as I'm watching the market right now, I think we can maybe look at what a Wyckoff distribution for Ethereum would look like and how the price of Bitcoin would need to support it almost superimposed in its own price uh, to support 
a second bite at the apple for the whales that um, you know collectively compositely are driving the crypto market so this to me could be um, you know a real grounds for Bitcoin maybe breaking a little lower and actually hitting its own accumulation uh, which it needs before another move to the upside which I, th I still think it has in it um, but those price movements and fluctuations might very well follow a supportive um, structure to support a Wyckoff distribution or, or you know might not be a, an exact Wyckoff distribution but support the movements of Ethereum because again as you as you see um, me scroll over this timeline this to me is a, is a explanation for why Bitcoin didn't crash if Bitcoin crashed completely in the Wyckoff sense it would not have formed a support for the you know second biggest crypto the sister um, nebula to go on her orbit so this is my little uh, explanation my current theory for why Bitcoin did not follow the textbook uh, drop-off in the Wyckoff distribution and that it might actually be in support of a second distribution pattern to be seen um, but we can almost see that superimposed in the Bitcoin uh, price action so I hope you enjoyed this if you did um, please you know share the channel share the content and for all of you out there, um, yeah, stay safe, stay smart, and uh, let's let's move with the interests at play, because when we go with the flow and we go with the the river, we have the force of that river at our back. And if this indeed is what is going to play out or something similar, um, you know they fooled us once, but now we've got potentially the cheat code. So let's just be smart about the what and the when, and um, yeah, make sure that you dig deep and find your own why. So until next time, thanks and cheers.